Alright, what's going on guys? My name is Alex Radzi, and I have really been meaning to do this tutorial and I just want to quickly apologize. I, I do that a lot in my videos when I do tutorials at least. I do tend to apologize just because I say I'm going to upload it on a certain day and then I choose not to because something else pops up. So I want to apologize. The main reason I didn't do it, if you, in case you were wondering, is just because of this phase 5 challenge. I've been pretty much grinding as every day I can. Um, I actually uploaded a 4 day mini -tage, which which is what I'm going to be kind of going over. Um, in this tutorial right now. Um, so if you haven't checked that out, I'd really appreciate it guys if you just click the screen right now, went over there. Whether you like, whether you see it or not, just please give me a like rating. It really does help me out a lot. And let me know what you thought in the comment section below. I hope you do watch it and obviously enjoy it. I'm not saying don't just go over there and like it. Just please watch it and enjoy it because this is pretty much four days of grinding out on, on a multi cods really. Just trying to, you know, if I get bored of one, just jump into another one and stuff. So I will be going over this. Uh, so it will kind of help if you have watched it anyway. So uh, it kind of benefits up us both, I guess, just like this tutorial. <laughs> so if you do, guys as well, if you do enjoy this tutorial and it did help, please remember to give it a like rain because I might forget to say at the end of the video just because I talk so freaking much. But anyway, in this in this tutorial video, guys, I'm going to be teaching you how, how to bring your clips over from Premiere Pro to After Effects with or without rendering. It's completely down to whether your computer can handle uh, running two programs at once, at once. So as you can see, my... Let me just quickly show you guys my computer specs. It's 3.4, you know, uh, gigahertz. It's, it's a pretty fast thing. Uh, only eight gigabyte of RAM. I've been meaning to up, uh, upgrade my RAM. But if you don't have like amazing RAM or amazing processing speed, uh, you might want to choose to render everything out from Premiere Pro and then drag it into After Effects. Now, if that's only if you don't have a powerful enough computer, I, I recommend that you just try it out and see see uh, if you can do it. And if not. Um, you know, you just got to render it out and put it into After Effects just because, you know, when, when you right click, let's, let's just quickly say this, if, if, when you right click and click replace with After Effects composition, what that does, it takes you then into After Effects with whatever you've right clicked and clicked that with. So it'll pretty much bring this thing here. It would bring that over into After Effects. Uh, you wouldn't have to render anything out. It would still, it would still be synced up and everything to your clips. Um, and what you could do then in After Effects is add like color corrections, effects, basic epicness, you know, just, uh, just pretty much do anything you want. And then when you went back into Premiere Pro, all the changes will have already been made. So it saves just that rendering thing. It just keeps it, um, you know, up to date and everything, which I, I really do like. Uh, personally, I do, you know, do sometimes I render out and sometimes I just choose to run both programs at once. But it honestly it is down to whatever I'm doing at the time. If, you, if I'm, you know, playing Xbox and editing at the same time, you know, in pre-game lobbies or whatever, I'll usually render out and stuff just because, um, you know, I'm not really worried about time. Uh, but if I am worried about time and stuff and I want to get it over and done with, I pretty much just, you know, do the whole link uh, composition type of dealio between After Effects and Premiere Pro. So, as I say, if you don't know if your computer would be fast enough, I recommend that you just um, try it out. So, I'll quickly teach you guys how to try it out. And then, once you found out uh, if it's not fast enough if your computer is not fast enough i'll quickly show you how to render so let's just say for example um all of this right here is your all your synced up stuff that you learned in the first two episodes of this of this tutorial series everything is synced up um you don't have actually have any cinematics yet because that's not a big deal you can do that after so what you want to pretty much do is highlight everything that you want to bring into after effects and add uh add like effects to and color creation to you want to just highlight them all just by left clicking and dragging over like that or you can just you know if you want to drag absolutely everything in including sounds you can just straight up hit command a or control a and it just highlights everything but i just recommend doing the footage because that's what you really touch in unless you are editing sound but when i tend to edit sound i pretty much just render it separately and kind of work on it separately just because i don't want to work on too many too much stuff in one composition so what you want to do, as I say, just highlight everything you want to bring in and then right click and click uh, replace with After Effects composition. Now, if you don't have After Effects open, um, it will open it up uh, automatically. And as you can see, I've already made uh, this video, uh, this this project called Radzi is Cool. Please like the video. So <laughs> if you haven't already, as I say, like the video, bitch. So now you've brought everything in. I've brought, you know, all my stuff. As you can see, obviously, I've already, um, you know, I've added effects to this and everything just because... Um, you know, this was the video I made and I just want to kind of show you guys examples of st and stuff. Um, so as I'm saying, this is, this is the phase five, uh, four day mini tage and I'm, I'm intending to upload some day tages come a couple, you know, tomorrow if I can, if not Wednesday at the latest, uh, I definitely want to do day tages because I've never actually tried to do day tages. Um, I don't know what happened here, but anyway, let's continue. 
So now we're in After Effects and you can pretty much, you know, from here you can add any effects you want. But, you know, if, if it, for example, just to test out to see whether your connection uh, with your computer is fast enough to run both at once, I'm sure I'm just going to go to, um, I don't know what I just did there, go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, and I'm going to add a Magic Bullet Looks. Now, if you don't have this plugin, I'm going to leave every single plugin that you're going to need um, in the description below. I will not leave a download link, though, guys. You've got to find that out yourself. Um, just straight up, if you don't want to pay for it, just straight up search it online and stuff. Uh, I really don't mind what you do. Um, you know, just <laughs> they do. people that do make these plugins, you know, they really are amazing plugins, but I do think they're very overpriced uh, for, like, everyday people like, you know, us guys that are students or that just don't work a lot of the time, if that makes sense. Um, so anyway, straight up add a uh, adjustment layer. Once you have magic bullet looks, then you just wanna hit click edit. You don't even have to use looks if you don't want to actually. You know what I will do is I'll quickly close lo looks when it comes up, I'll quickly cancel it. Um, and then I'll just add a curve. So you just wanna go to, you know, you can I usually just type it on the effects and presets panel. Um, just straight up curves and then bring it on and then just straight up make, the, make a weird color correction. So right now I'll just do that, right? So you want to hit just, you know, save that real quick. I tend to save before going to check if it's made any changes in Premiere Pro. So I've just quickly saved it. And now I've gone back in. As you can see, the color correction is on this horrible color correction in my ad is now on this, on all my clips and stuff. So if when you say, for example, if you click play the space bar to just to preview it, if it's ridiculously laggy, I mean, the mind's not bad because what you can actually do is just pause it, replay it. It plays, it plays smooth just for a, like a split maybe second and then it starts to lag a little bit. This is the main reason I don't like doing it um, kind of in between just because the amount of effects that you're using the, 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 in Premiere Pro it just sometimes just cannot keep up. So if it's absolutely, if it's absolutely uh, ridiculously laggy, um, actually I'm just going to disable this uh, Fall Out Boy song just for the, for the tutorial just because I don't want to be copyright straight for, for this um, but if it's ridiculously laggy guys then you should want to pretty much render out a Premiere Pro uh, and then put your stuff into After Effects so what I'm going to do is just take off this adjustment layer just because it's disgusting and then go back into Premiere Pro and as you can see hopefully it'll be got away it's gone it's absolutely gone away so if you don't if you can as I say if your computer is not fast enough or you just prefer rendering and bringing it into Premiere, uh, After Effects which I get because I do do it sometimes just straight up once you have this timeline selected you want to go to uh, file export media so from here, once it actually comes up, um, I've, I've made that, I'm gonna make this a little bigger just for you guys, uh, just for this tutorial, um, and then I'll make that a bit smaller just so you can see the uh, the details over here. Now, I what you want to do is just go to Format QuickTime. Now, once you're here, it will probably bring up uh, one of these. Maybe I've actually got an uncompressed preset. Now, I'm gonna leave that a, a link in the description so you can just quickly download that. It will be a .epr file. Uh, I just got that from from here. Uh, it would be a .epr file, and you want to just once you've downloaded that, put it you know on on make a folder on your desktop called uh, Premiere Pro Presets, or find a way to put it inside um, Premiere Pro. You don't have to do that because I'm pretty sure once you've downloaded it and you know unzipped it, all you need to do is click Import Preset once you're on this page, and then click on the EPR link that I'm going to give you guys. It'll probably just be called Uncompressed Preset. Um, so you know just do that, and once you have done that, remember to click. Uh, save preset because then every time you log on to Premiere Pro and you want to do an uncompressed preset, uncompressed meaning that it doesn't compress the 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 footage, so it doesn't lose its its main quality and and frame rate and whatever. Um, pretty much, you just want to hit save preset and then you know because I've already saved it, it will come up with an error for me. But then it will just ask you what do you want to name it as? Just call it uncompressed preset or whatever. It does not matter. Just so every time that you come on, all you need to do is just click preset and click uncompress. So when you when you do originally click it, it'll probably come up with this one or something. Then all you did need to do is just click that and change it. You have to be on QuickTime for that to to, the, to, to change, as far as I know. <laughs> so, but once you've done that, just check that everything is looking good. Make sure the use maximum render quality is ticked. Do not tick the use previews and use frame blending. Uh, as far as I know, the use previews, uh, actually in the past when I used to edit for Willy G and a couple of Optic uploads, uh, and actually I get with, uh, when I edited for Phase C Dub ages ago, years ago, um, it actually kind of uh, makes the footage ghosty, where I mean like the frame actually blends and I guess that will be the the frame blending it just kind of the, the frames go in between each other and it makes it look like you haven't disabled resampled your footage so do not click those two uh, just just only the maximum render quality if it's not already ticked then you just want to you know pretty much just click that 
Cooler Alex is cool like the video, smiley face or whatever. And you know, just click save and then click uh, Q or export. It does not matter. If you click Q, it'll bring up uh, Adobe Media Encoder. And whether you've um, whether you've cracked Adobe, Adobe Media Encoder or not, as what I mean by cracked is in like, you know, if you paid for it, then you don't need to crack it. It'll be working fully functioning and stuff. But if you have cracked it and got it illegally, it will not, uh, it may or may not uh, work properly. So I, I recommend just clicking export. It does exactly the same thing as far as I know. And then once that's done, you pretty much just want to, uh, sorry, I just turned around because I thought there was some guy behind me. That was creepy. <laughs> I felt like a, a breeze or something. That was really weird. Uh, so obviously once that's done, uh, you pretty much just want to then drag your stuff into After Effects. So by doing that, all you pretty much need to do, I'll quickly do that. Sorry for the guys that uh, are doing the um, the link in between After Effects and uh, Premiere Pro. Just I had to explain it for the guys that um, are a bit like me that do maybe a bit of both or just in general um, want to do this because of the computer speed or whatever. Uh, so once it's rendered out, let's for example say I wanted to um, put in, say this is what it, what it was. Um, let's bring in this one. Say this was the thing you just rendered out of Premiere Pro. Uh, what you want to do is obviously just drag it into this project uh, bit on After Effects and then drag it down onto the composition button here. And that will, what that will do is make a composition. What I mean by composition is this is this thing right here is the composition. It's like a timeline, so um, it'll make that matching the, the the footage quality. If you manually click composition, new composition, then you've got to do all the stuff. Um, for example, if I did that, I'd have to then click, you know, width 1280, height 720, I'd have to match everything. So just doing it this way by dragging it onto that, straight up just matches your footage, so it's already done for you. Uh, it's, a, it's a super awesome button, to be fair. So let's say now um, your clips, actually, before, I'm not actually going to show you any, any effects in, in this episode, guys. What I'm just going to do is show you the basics of After Effects, because... I don't want to jump jump the gun straight up and just be like, all right, this is how you do this, this is how you do this. I want to I want to show you guys um, what After Effects, like how to use it. Because if you don't know how to use it, and I'm straight up showing you uh, effects and stuff, you're going to be like, wait, 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 how, how do I do this? What, what? I'm so confused. I'm straight up just going to put a gun in my mouth and pull the trigger. So I'm not going to do that for the sake of the walls being destroyed by blood or the roof, depending on when you're doing it or stuff. So. What you want to pretty much do is straight up go to your, your if you've never used After Effects before, it'll probably be the default uh, kind of, it'll be a default, like everything will be probably not how this is. It might be, I'm not 100% sure, but I know that I have dragged these windows uh, to specifically how I would like them to be. So obviously the main priority is what you see and the timeline. So as you can see, these two things that the timeline is where you edit over here. And this is what you see, you know, when you scroll through your clips or just manually go through the the frame by frame animation uh these these two obviously these are very you know the very uh, that's what you need to be looking at if that makes sense so um what i've actually done is the project up here is where all of your stuff that you've dragged in and the solids and all that crap this is all where this is going to be kept so this is personally how i prefer if you prefer another way uh then f for sure do it your own way but this is how personally i think it's the best way to do it um so to change the windows, you pretty much just net right next to it. There's like a few dots and you want to just click that and drag and it comes up with all this crap. So just kind of do it, pause the video, put it in obviously HD and make sure you have matched mine. It's definitely what I recommend. You don't have to do it, but just try and match mine. It is, it's pretty cool. Um, I, I definitely like it this way. I wouldn't think about changing. I'll just probably get really confused. So um, once you've done that, obviously I'll show you what, what, um, what you know the basics of after effects is so obviously this is as i say the project where everything is kept this is what you see and stuff uh if i was to double click on this it would bring up this uh kind of composition thing where you can actually rotoscope your stuff i'll get into that in future uploads and stuff so there's not actually anything to worry about right now um but let's say for example um let's talk about keyframes real quick um i don't want to run this episode too fast uh too long because it's already almost 15 minutes long so what i will do uh, i'll quickly show you keyframes and just the quick basics of after effects so if i want to make a keyframe let's say if i wanted to increase the scale on this clip as i get a triple headshot feed on league play let's say um what I'll do is just click on this and then straight up hit S. And then obviously you can see here scale. Now I'll quickly go through what these things are. Now this is just the scale. It's basically a hundred, you know, just if I pull it down to 79, it goes lower. Obviously you guys should know that. Um, obviously if just by going like this, it's just, it does it um, as you can see it. Now if, if, 
it almost does it like a live thing so as you're changing it you see what you're doing uh, i definitely prefer that and i think yeah it's live update so if you don't have that button clicked click that because if i turned it off and then change the uh the, the scale it would I wouldn't know, like, I'd be putting it down, like, I'm adjusting it right now, but it's not changing. So, I'll click that, and obviously, right, now I can see what I'm doing, and I can kind of adjust it that way. So, make sure you do have that button clicked, always. Now, what this thing here almost looks like a, a paper clip or, or a staple, I don't even know. Just, if you unclick that, oh, here we go, look, it even should tells you what it is. <laughs> so, if you unclick that, this, this right one here is, like, the width, kind of, like, the, the whip that stretches it like up to down if that makes sense where the other one is kind of from left to right it kind of stretches it you always unless you're unless you're manually you want to make it look stretched or whatever I don't know why you would uh, then obviously untick that and it, you can you can adjust them um, you can adjust them manually like separately though uh, obviously I leave my clicked if I want to do like screen pumps and stuff just because it, it does it both together at once so that's that um, try not to click any of these buttons here um, this one's for 3d if you want to make uh, your composition 3d now what I mean by that if you click it it brings up this little square thing and you can just adjust stuff so it like flips over if you wanted to do like a really cool kind of back to front edit or something I don't know what's going through your mind but that pretty much makes it 3d now we'll probably get into that in future uploads I'm just pretty much showing you guys the basics of After Effects, just so you know if you accidentally click something or you want to know something, this will then obviously tell you. This is for uh, motion blur. Uh, as you click it, or yeah, as you click, if you click it and hold it, it tells you what it is. So this is you know adjustment layer. This is 3D layer, and this is frame blending. Now frame blending, if you have, for example, um, if I was to click through the next frame and it would be still, uh, I would need to frame blend just because. Um, you know, there's not a frame in the next bit and it's telling me that there is, but it's not moving kind of thing. Probably didn't make much sense. Now these things, I actually don't know what they're for. I know that this one uh, is for compositions and stuff, but I won't get into that just now. That doesn't really concern you guys. Um, this button here, the little circle, is to solo stuff. Now if, for example, if I added a black solid and called it like the... Oh, okay, not lie. <laughs> like the video. Uh, if I wanted to solo, just like not see the black clip, or whatever and just solo the f footage so I can actually just see the footage I'll just click this little circle and then I can see the footage again uh, if I want to shut off layers that are on top of other layers or I just want to disable them frequently just hit the eye and it kind of turns it invisible it's just like an invisible layer um, another thing with clips you might tend to have sound with it um, if you're rendering out sound after and you like say for example when I quickly ran preview this you can hear you can hear the background stuff now, you know, if you don't want that, you just pretty much hit the sound thing and now when I render it, you can't hear anything. So that's pretty much for sound hiding. This is for uh, footage and like visibility hiding. Um, the effects and presets, let me just show you guys how that works. You know, if I wanted to add a curves, which is like a color correction or like just color altering thing, just type it in and you'll, I don't even, you don't even have to type the whole thing out. You can pretty much just type in C-U-R and then it comes up. You've got a few, few suggestions that begin with C-U-R. You, you should probably get the idea of how that works. The preview tab up here, um, pretty much just try and copy it as, as how I have it. I'm not really sure what anything else does. I've always kept it the same. Uh, this button here, obviously, the next frame. If you highlight over it, guys, it does tell you what it does. Um, but this is for RAM previewing. Now, if you want to preview it, you don't just hit spacebar because that, it does kind of flick through the frames, but it's not as good. Uh, you always want to, it doesn't play like real time, as it say up here. Like when I push spacebar up here, it doesn't say, it says not real time. So if you hit this RAM preview, it rams preview through it. You can also, you know, minimize it. I'd be like, oh, hey, I just want to check Twitter or whatever. So you straight up just hit that. Uh, say, oh, you know, I'm, I think I'm actually watching the optic stream. No, no, that's my past. Uh, yeah, I do have the optic stream up, but oh, yeah, it is moving still. Um, so I'm actually watching the optic LAN right now. But anyway, then I can come back. And if you do have, I'm not sure if it does it for Windows, but over here it does say the frames out of, um, you know, of its progression. So at the moment it's 743 out of thingy, blah, blah, blah. So then if I come back on, I could just click uh, or hit it, hit the button again, and then it previews through it completely real time. Obviously, this does depend on your computer uh, speed as well, I think. Um, but what, that, what this pretty much does is it renders out every single frame as an image into a folder, and then it just plays it through. So that's what that does. Obviously, if you um, kind of want to save stuff, you just hit file save. It's pretty self-explanatory and stuff. Uh, all of this stuff. I'll probably get into it in another episode because it actually is dragging on to 20 minutes So I'm probably gonna end it there. I'll probably get into the net I will in the next episode for sure get into more more like basics of uh, After Effects because there's so much more I can tell you guys like right this button right here there's 
views, like you can do different views and stuff. It's absolutely crazy what you can actually do. So I will end it here, guys. If you guys really did enjoy the video, be sure to give it a like rain and let me know what you thought in the comment section below. Also, follow me on Twitter and Twitch. All links will be in the description below. I also, you know, if you haven't checked out the the phase five mini touch, the four day mini touch, please go and check that out and wish me the best of luck guys. If you were going for the phase five challenge as well, if you're a player slash editor or whatever, uh, I do wish you the best of luck in getting a phase. Um, just, you know, really benefit from this guys. Anyway, yeah, obviously, as I say, if you, if you learned something, please, you know, return the favor and give me a like green. That'd be absolutely awesome. Anyway, guys, be sure to have a lovely evening, morning, or just day in general, uh, whenever you're watching this. And uh, yeah, that's it. Peace out, guys. Bye. Am I gone? Nope. Now I'm gone. Bye.